The seven letters to the seven churches represent a complete gospel message to the universal church or Christendom. These letters constitute the foundation for the entire book of Revelation, not just as a historical portrait of the first century church, but of the types of conditions in the universal church until the end of time. The first letter is written to the church of Ephesus. Ephesus means desirable, and it was located at the mouth of the Caister River facing the Aegean Sea. It had one of the finest harbours in the world and was a main commercial centre for the coast of Western Asia. It was also a gateway to the province for the Roman officials. Today the city lies about five miles inland due to a build-up of silt from the river and with the loss of the port in the 4th century, the city gradually lost its significance over time. But when Revelation was written, it was the place to be. Stamped coins found in the ruins bear the words, the first of the greatest and the first and greatest metropolis in Asia. This city had one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, the Temple of Diana, a huge and magnificent structure that would have been located close to the harbour. Other temples of various emperors were in the city, as well as the Celsus Library, the third largest library in the empire that could house up to 12,000 scrolls, the facade of which still stands today. Ephesus was blessed by the ministry of Paul, Apollos, Timothy and John and was likely the place where the mother of Jesus lived until her death as John was entrusted with her care. Due to the commercial and religious significance of this town, the work that started here quickly spread abroad, symbolic of the church in the first century. This church receives perhaps one of the best commendations a church ever receives. I know your works, your labour and your patience, how you cannot bear those who are evil, and you've tested those who say they are apostles and are not. They were a hard-working church, preaching the gospel fervently. They were vigilant about doctrinal purity, for during this time period they were told to beware of wolves coming into the church in sheep's clothing. The church was also told that they were persevering, hard-working and did not become weary, but they were rebuked for leaving their first love, either first in time, as in their conversion, or first in prominence, as in Jesus needed to be first hardworking for God, but they had lost their love of him and other people. This description of a doctrinally sound church that was working hard to preach the gospel fits the apostolic church and the experience during that time period. This is usually dated from 31 to 100 AD when the last of the apostles died. During this 70 years, the church started with a fire ignited at Pentecost. This fire burned strong and even 30 years previous, when Paul wrote his letter to the Ephesians, it had not diminished. But it waned into a loveless state where the Gospel Commission was seen as an obligation and duty rather than a calling compelled by love. The only solution for waning love is to remember the first love experience and never be satisfied until it returns. Jesus remembers his first love experience and regrets its departure, but the fault is not his, it is ours. Remembering this happy love state can help create a desire to bring it back. Those who are going through this experience, the promise to those who overcome is that they will eat from the tree of life. Maybe you are going through an Ephesus experience. Perhaps you are doctrinally sound and evangelistically fervent, but you have forgotten why you are doing it and the person you are doing it for. Maybe you have wandered far from God and you need that first love experience back again. Pray to God, repent, that you may have that sweet and beautiful walk with Him again.